What's up and welcome back to the Tales of Gears channel. This is the first episode of Gears of Glory, basically where I review a modern game. And today, I'm going to go with the most recent one I've beaten. And honestly, I've really wanted to talk about this one anyway. It's kind of been 10 years in the making and it is one hell of an apology from the developer Square Enix. Uh, just so you know, I'm talking about Final Fantasy XV. I fear I have left too much unsaid. And this is where I say it's an apology, is because I have beaten every Final Fantasy game ever released on console, not necessarily the handhelds. I even beat that piece of shit Mystic Quest. Okay, so, Final Fantasy XV, the reason I say this is an apology is because after 12, the series kind of went down the toilet. 13 was a load of crap. So was 13.2, and so was Lightning Returns. If that's not your opinion, I'm sorry, it is mine. Uh, so, 15 basically comes in. It was originally Final Fantasy versus 13. Uh, it was developed by the same team that did Kingdom Hearts. Small side note, you need to get on Kingdom Hearts 3 like now, you cheap bastards. Uh, but the reason I say this is an apology, you can tell the love and kind of the return to form of Final Fantasy. At the very beginning of the game, it says it is a Final Fantasy for beginners and for fans of the series. I completely agree with that. Uh, it is very easy if you have never picked up a Final Fantasy to get into this game. It is a massive open world Final Fantasy. We haven't had one of those since really Final Fantasy VIII. Everything kind of became linear in the later installments. Uh, there's a lot of side stuff to do. The gameplay is absolutely fun. There's two modes. You've got the live action mode where you control the main character. And your side guys basically do their thing. Then there's a wait mode. I didn't play the wait mode. Uh, John did. Uh, he seemed to enjoy it. Not really for me. I like to play the games as they're meant to be played. Don't get me wrong. I love the ATB system. I miss it. God, I wish they would bring it back. But... Uh, from what I saw John play of it, it reminded me way too much of the battle system from 12, and I fucking hated that. <laughs> uh, so let's get into a little bit more of the gameplay. Basically, this is a different kind of Final Fantasy. Normally, you meet characters as you go along. Right out the gate, you have the four friends. You don't meet anybody along the way of any consequence. I mean, there's a lot of NPCs that are vital to the story. But for the most part, it focuses basically on Noctis and his three friends and the bond that they share throughout this journey. Uh, in order to get a full picture of the story, though, and this is probably my one gripe with the game, you have to watch Brotherhood and Kingsglaive, or you will miss certain things in the plot. They won't make sense unless you've seen both of those movies. Uh, also, Luna Freya, she played such a big part in Kingsglaive. I thought she would play a bigger part in the game didn't happen but you know for what she was in the game it was pretty cool uh i'm gonna try not to spoil anything here uh, it kind of sucks because there's a lot that you want to say that you can't uh i will say this uh final fantasy 15 i am a big stickler on the villains for the games uh if you don't have a good villain you don't have a good game especially where final fantasy is concerned and you got a lot to live up to when you consider sephiroth and kefka and even Ultimatia, she had uh, a pretty strong presence as a villain. This guy, I mean, they, they brought back the, uh, the one of the great villains, man, uh, Chancellor Arden. You can tell he's manipulating you when he pops up through the game. You never feel wholly safe around this guy, and you're just waiting for the turn to come. Eventually it does, but he just, he seems evil from the get-go with everything he does and he's got that accent that just makes him sound so much more like a dick i don't know what it is his voice just i mean it oozes it oozes evil and it's it's like it's like half british half american it's weird if a hero had the voice he'd be that much more charming and suave for a villain he's just all of a sudden he's this dick and you know he's a dick and you just want to call him a dick but you can't uh, all right, so let's get into the main cast. You have Noctis, who is the prince of Insomnia. 
basically the kings of insomnia are all bound to a crystal which the empire steals in the events in king's wave it's where all their magic is tied to uh noctis is sent out of the kingdom before this happens because the king basically anticipates the empire's turn this false truce and this sham wedding between him and luna freya although as you play the game you can tell the two of them actually are in love uh and then you have his three guards, his three friends from childhood. You have Gladios, who's basically your big bruiser character. You have Ignis, who is basically the brains of the operation. And you can tell he's the big brother of the group. He's the mature one. You know, Gladios is like pure passion. Noctis is kind of a balance of the two. And then you have Prompto. I know I said it in the top ten, but I'm going to say it again. And this goes with every Final Fantasy. There is always one character that is absolutely fucking worthless, and that is Prompto. And when I say worthless, I don't mean to this story because he's actually a very integral part of the story. I enjoy him as a character. In battle, he's about as useful in a fight as me after a gallon of tequila. So you will spend most of your time resurrecting him right out the gate. I don't get why a guy with a gun wants to get right up in the fray. You know, he doesn't. St I've tried everything to keep him as much out of the, the the battle as I can to just shoot people, it doesn't work. He dies a lot, he has low HP, he has low defense. He's got decent attack, I'll give him that, but other than that, absolutely worthless. Uh, as the story evolves, certain things happen to the characters that change the way they fight. It can't be helped and it can't be stopped. Uh, you do lose the character, all three characters for an extended period of time, uh, and it was a, it's a very difficult stretch of the game. Uh, if you haven't really handled Noctis's dodging ability, you're not going to make it through. So make sure that you get a handle on that. Uh, I've already talked a little bit about the antagonist, and I got to tell you, he is one of my favorite Final Fantasy villains. It, he was just so good. He was, you you want to like him, but you can't because he's just so arrogant. Uh, as far as the plot goes, you're basically trying to gather the six Archon, which are basically the gods of this world. Uh, they are basically the Eldians, the Summons, the Guardian Force, whatever they were called in the other Final Fantasies. Uh, it's a little bit different though. You don't really get to summon them at will. Uh, you only really get the ability to summon them after you've been in a lengthy battle. Uh, you will start to see sparkles appear on the screen and depending on the color, it depends on the uh, god that you summon. They're all pretty vicious. They're all spectacular to watch. Uh, the only, one, only thing is uh, that I have a particular gripe with is the magic system. No one really uses magic. You get what's called elemency, and it is useful, don't get me wrong. It saved my ass in a lot of battles, especially with the Behemoth King. Yeah, you will know what I'm talking about when you fight him. It's unavoidable. Just get ready for it. Uh, as far as the time you're going to invest in this game, it's really up to you. There's a lot of side stuff to do, and uh, my best advice for the side quest, don't get too big for your britches. You will stumble upon monsters that are super high level, that are gigantic. And best the way I can describe is if they're five levels higher than you, you're gonna survive the fight, but you better have a lot of healing items. If they're 10 levels higher than you, one person might survive the fight and you're gonna run out of healing items. If they're any more than 10 levels higher than you, avoid them at all costs, you will get massacred. There's no way around it. These things deal massive damage and have ungodly HP. Uh, but when you do get to beat them, they always yield a really, really good reward. It is worth it once you level up to go ahead and go after them. And of course, there is always the new game plus mode uh, where you get to basically go back before the final battle. There's a couple hidden uber bosses a giant tortoise mountain thing. I haven't found him yet, but I will. And I think I will do a gameplay video of that for you guys. Uh, as far as the game goes, 
I was level 20 before I even started the story. There's that much side crap to do. Just about everything gives you experience. Exploring the world is fun. There's a lot uh, to see and do. And the, the backgrounds are breathtaking. I mean, they are just absolutely beautiful. Uh, you can tell this was a labor of love from Square. And thank God it was because I was about to give up on this series. I really, really was. Uh, I, as far as beating it goes, you don't have to grind. That's kind of where the For Beginners comes in. In the interest of time, so I could do this review for you guys, I kind of just ran through the game as fast as I could. I beat it at level 45. It's doable. It's tough. Make sure you have enough healing items. Uh, I think John beat it at what, level 60? 52. 52. I mean, so it can be done. You don't have to be some ungodly high level. I mean, I recommend it if you want to fight the, uh, the massive monsters that are in the city at the end. Because uh, you're looking at like level 84, level 90. It's not fun. There's a lot of sneaking around if you're at a low level like I was. Uh, the ending is well worth it. Uh, and I just want to say Squaresoft, Square Enix, whatever you're called now, you are forgiven. This came out for the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and I believe it came out for PC. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, go out and get it. Uh, it is a basically redemption project for Final Fantasy. I uh, actually kind of hold it in the same esteem as I do Final Fantasy VII, which is my favorite game of all time. Fifteen is a very enjoyable experience. There's a lot of customization. Uh, there's a lot of weapons to be found. There's a lot of dungeons to run around. Great diversity of enemies. <coughs> I like the hunter system. I mean, everything about the game was done well. And it's about time. So, as far as what I'm going to rate this game, I am going to rate it 9 out of 10. I do have some small gripes with the game, but they're really nitpicks. They're not They're not any major flaw. There's also supposed to be DLC coming out for the first time. You're supposed to be able to play Final Fantasy multiplayer. I am looking forward to that, and I can't wait to check it out. As well as each character is supposed to have their own download content. I'll pay for Ignis and Gladio. <laughs> Sorry, Prompto, you're not getting any of my money. You're worthless bastard. Uh, so please go out, and, go out and give Squaresoft some love and play it. Uh, enjoy. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, as always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you have any suggestions on a modern game that you would like me to play, please comment down below. If I don't have it, I will go get it. And if you guys don't have anything you want to suggest, the next game I will be reviewing is Resident Evil 7, which releases on January 23rd, so look for the video sometime in early February. Game on, guys. We're still watching, aren't they? Can you make this privacy? I mean, really, this is getting ridiculous. Just click the button. Click the button. can't stay here. Seriously, press the button. <laughs> it's right there. Press it. Bye.